Please turn to page 150 for lecture notes. The purpose for lecture notes is twofold. One, to provide your students with the background knowledge necessary for a unit of study in one of their core subjects. In our lesson, we're going to give the background for a subject in science for the life cycle. The second purpose for lecture notes is for your students to learn all the parts of expository text and also to be exposed to the categories or the sequencing organizer. So we know that we're going to provide background and also provide that exposure to the students on how to write information using the big idea, either the category sequencing organizer, and then a conclusion. For this lesson, you will need the following tools. I suggest that you post a chart. Notice we have a chart for your students that you can post up on the wall to follow the steps for the lecture notes. These are the same steps that your students will use whether they're writing information independently or whether you're giving information in lecture notes. Hence, they will learn how to organize information because you are using these same steps whether you provide the information or whether they ultimately know it now and have to organize it in their own writing. You can make the chart like you see visualized here on this page or just go to the table of contents in our online videos and you will see the chart there to download in an 8.5 by 14 size in color. Down below you'll also see that I have the graphic organizer for the sequence because we are going to do lecture notes and our graphic organizer we're going to use will be the sequencing one. This is part of page 108 where I had all the different organizers at a glance for you to show the text structure, keywords, and what the body of the organizer would look like with the hand signals. So I placed it here so that we could use it as a reference as we're going through this lesson. Let's begin our lesson following our steps. I'm the giver of the information. Remember, the students are just starting this whole lesson on the life cycle, so they don't have the background. And in order for us to get to the textbooks and reading and to understand this information at a deep level, I need to begin by providing them with background and also incorporating writing into this process. You also will need to provide your students with eight and a half by 11 inch blank paper for them to record the information and make their organizer. Notice page 151 is blank. On page 151, I will demonstrate a lecture note lesson. I've drawn a landscape piece of paper on this blank page so that we could walk through this lesson. Your students though, and you, when you're presenting this lesson, should have eight and a half by 11 paper. Each student has it on their desk and you have the sheet underneath your document viewer or you have a large piece of butcher paper up on the wall in which you're presenting this lesson. Let's get started with our lecture notes. I'm going to act as if you're the students in the room. Boys and girls, we are going to start our brand new unit in science and that unit is going to be about living thing. We're going to do lecture notes and lecture notes are what college kids do. College kids take lecture notes and when you take lecture notes you sit up tall in your seat and when I write down the information you write it with me and we also go back and we rehearse the information. Let's get started on the lecture notes. And for us at our grade level to understand what living things are, we have to be able to prove that something is alive. That's why we have to learn about the life cycle. And in order for me to give you this lesson about the life cycle, I want you to say, get organized. So go ahead and give it to me. Say, get organized. So the kids go, get organized. And I go, okay, we're going to have information. So to get organized, I need three parts, an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Let's draw the three parts on our paper. We go up to the top, we make a line across. We go to the bottom, we make a line across. And I'm going to put a little stick person here for you to see, oh, look at that. I have my introduction, body, and my conclusion. I don't have the kids make the stick figure. You may just want to do that to show them. Look at our organizer. What does it have? It has the intro, body, and conclusion. We have our introduction, body, and conclusion. Now I'm ready to give you the information on the life cycle. 
Let's go to step one, topic sentence. Everybody, topic sentence. Say, what's the big idea about the life cycle? My organizer, I need to make a secret formula for the topic sentence. Let's write an S, S light bulb. What is SS light bulb? That's our secret formula to make our topic sentence, the big idea. What's this information all about? We have our secret formula. Now everyone say, what does SS light bulb mean? Thank you for asking. The first S is for setting. Let's point to our wrist like we're looking at a watch and say setting tells us time and place. What does setting tell us? Time and place. So when is this happening. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw a circle with an arrow because this is happening all through time. The information I'm telling you about is happening all through time. All right. And look how I made just a quick little picture there. I didn't have to write all through time. We don't want to write all these words down. That's not what good note takers do. What do they do? They put keywords or quick pictures on their organizer so they can just go back and say the words when they actually practice them, not have to write them all down. That takes too long. We have all through time. Now we need to know where is this information happening? Let's put a circle here under the first S with a squiggly line and a squiggly line. It's happening here on the planet Earth. Let's go back just like all college kids would do and read our notes. Ready everyone? Notice how I'm doing motions because that's what college kids do. They always act things out because it makes their brain remember. Let's do it again all through time on the planet Earth. Let's go to the second S. What does that mean? Put your hands together like you are reading a textbook and in this case a science textbook. Open it up and say subject. Ready? Subject. Who or what is this information about? Let's do it again. Ready? Subject. Who or what is this information about? This information is going to be about living things. And when we say that, we mean plants. Ooh, let's draw like a tree for plants. And animals. Let's just draw a pretend animal here. Not a real one. So what are we talking about, everybody? Plants and animals. Plants and animals. Let's go back and review our notes because college kids always do. Ready? all through time on the planet Earth, plants and animals. Let's go to our light bulb. The light bulb is, what's the big idea? And who cares? Why is this so important? Ah, so our light bulb has two parts to it. Let's go back and ask, what's the big idea? What information am I learning about plants and animals? Oh, I'm learning that they go through a life cycle. Now, if I have to write down a word with second or third graders, I always tell them, boys and girls, watch me. I'm going to write the word down quickly. L-I-F-E. You do that. And as I say the letters, I write them. So I chunk the letters, I say it, and I write them. And that makes them write it faster. Let's write cycle. C-Y. C-Y. C-L-E. C-L-E. Oh, look at that. Life cycle. And when I say the letters, it gets that word written down quickly. Why do I do that? Because whenever you write words down on an organizer and children take notes, it takes a long time for everyone to get the words on the paper. So when you say it and chunk it and write it quickly, that accelerates the student's writing. Let's go back and say our big idea again. Ready? All through time on the planet Earth, plants and animals go through a life cycle. Who cares? Why is this so important? Well, this is why we're studying life cycle, because the life cycle, if something has a life cycle, then we know that it's a living thing. So let's put, I don't want to write living thing. I'm just going to put some lines here that could show that stick out, that show that something's alive. We'll review our entire sentence. I have all the information for my big idea. I now am going to go back and say it all. All through time on the planet Earth, Plants and animals go through a life cycle that proves they're a living thing. Excellent. I love it. Now the kids are going to turn to each other and they are going to practice rehearsing this information. If I notice that they have mastered it and they're pretty good at it, then I'll move on to the next part of the organizer. 
Or I could turn around and say, boys and girls, if I'm near the end of my lesson and I need to continue this tomorrow, I could say, boys and girls, we have a few more minutes. Let's come up with many different ways to say this same sentence. I don't need to start from left and then go all the way to the right and read it in order. Let's go ahead and say the information in a different order. Plants and animals are living things because they go through a life cycle. Wow, that sounds good. Plants and animals, living things on our planet, go through a life cycle. Mm, I don't like that as much. Let's try another one. Plants and animals go through a life cycle because they are living things. That sounds pretty good too. So notice, I don't always have to have the setting there, but I do need the subject and big idea, and I can change it around. I've practiced many different ways to say that information. Turn to your buddy and tell them the big idea about the life cycle. At this point, I'm walking around the room and I'm listening to what the kids are saying. If I feel like they have a handle on the information, if I'm at the end of my lesson for the day, I may just have them write that out on a lined piece of paper. And then tomorrow, we'll come back and continue with the organizer. And at the end of each lesson, they will write out that portion of the organizer. Or if I've been doing lecture notes with them for quite a while, we will do the writing after the entire organizer is completed, which may take one to three different days, depends on how much information I'm giving there. Let's continue on. We now have our topic sentence, the big idea. Where am I going to go next? I'm going to have to choose an organizer. Let's go to the body. What does the body have? Information, information, information that tells about the big idea. So I'm looking at my big idea and deciding what information do I need to tell about in the body to tell about this big idea. Is the information going to be about the parts of an animal and plant or about the life cycle? Oh, this body has to be about what? The life cycle of plants and animals. So I look at the big idea to determine what the body needs to be about. Which organizer will I choose? Categories, whole to part, or a sequence? beginning, end, what happened in the middle. To choose categories or a sequence, can it be in any order or does it have to be in order? For a life cycle, it has to be in order. So if it has to be in order, which organizer am I going to use? The sequence organizer. And when I have the sequence organizer, notice down here, what do I do? I put a line and I put a line. So I have my beginning, middle, and ending of whatever the information is that I'm sequencing. Beginning, middle, end. Once I draw the organizer, then I need to label it. And my hand signals are going to tell me how to label it. Let's look at the sequencing hand signal. Beginning, end, what happened in the middle? Which part of the organizer am I going to fill in first? The beginning. Notice I'm going to put a line up here, halfway across, just in case I want to put a transition word there. I'm leaving that blank. What happened at the beginning of the life cycle for all the plants and animals? Hmm. They start their life. How do they start their life? So I'm going to put start here. How do they start their life? Let's see. Animals could start as babies. I'll put like a little baby, like a human baby, or let's say an egg and Plants may start as seeds. Now, I'm not telling you all the different ways that living things start their life, but this is what most of them do. Either they start as little babies, eggs, or seeds. Notice I need to put the word or here. Or means one of these three, not all. I can't say babies, eggs, and seeds because that's, that means that that's how they start their life. They're a baby egg and a seed all together. Mm -mm. What word do I need to connect all these? Or, we labeled our beginning of our organizer. They start their life as a baby, egg, or seed. We filled in the beginning. What do we need to fill in next? Ah, the end. So I will go to the end, draw half a line, and then we will label the end. What happened at the end? Oh, they become adults or they become full grown. We have 
they start their life. And finally, at the end, they are adult or full grown. We labeled the beginning, we labeled the end. Now that we know here's the beginning and the end, it's much easier to do what? Figure out what happened in the middle. So we'll start with, they start their life and then they're full grown. How did they go from starting their life to becoming full grown? What happened in the middle? And that's really important that you say it like that. Once you do beginning and what happened in the middle, go back and now add. They start their life, then they're full grown. What happened in the middle? What steps did they go through to get from being a baby to being full grown? Ooh, let's see. First, they grew. They started to grow. And then they started to change. So what two steps happened in the middle? They started to grow and change. So I'm going to write the number one here with a line. And I'm going to write grow. And then I'm going to write number two with a line and write change. We have all the parts of our organizer labeled. We will go back, read the beginning, and then figure out how we're going to say the details in the middle. All through time on the planet Earth, plants and animals go through a life cycle that proves they're living things. Notice when I talk about this first detail, I have a line here. I need to come up with my sentence. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take out my fists and I'm going to ask the first thing. Who or what am I talking about in this first box? Who or what? Plants and animals. Woo, woo, woo. Redundant police, redundant police. I don't want to keep saying plants and animals. What's another way that I could say plants and animals? Let's use a subject pronoun, they. So we have they. What about they? What do they do at the beginning of their life cycle? They start their life as live babies, eggs, or seeds. Ooh, that sounds good. Ready? They start their lives as live babies, eggs, or seeds. I could put the word they here, or I could start with a transition word. Notice on the preceding page, I had transitions here. To begin, or first, I don't have it here, but I could say at the start, could come up with many different ways to say this is the first part of their life cycle. Let's start with the word first. First, they start their life as live babies, eggs, or seeds. Excellent. Let's go back and say it all through time on the planet Earth. Plants and animals go through a life cycle that proves they're a living thing. First, they start as live babies, eggs, or seeds. I'm going to my middle box and I want to start there. Who or what am I talking about? The plants or animals and what do they do? They grow. How do they grow though? I want to put some information there. Oh, they nourish their bodies. Hmm. I think I'm going to start with my transition word next here. I don't want to just say they because I, I want had first, let's use next. Next, so notice I'm planning my sentences out. Next, they nourish their bodies so they can grow. We're going to go to change. I could just say, then they change, or let's look at some other transitions here. I have the word after. How about after a while? After a while, they change. Hmm. How do they change? After a while, their body structures change. Hmm, so the size and shapes of them change. So after a while, they change or their body structures. I think I'm gonna put the word structures here just so that I can get that idea. Let's go back and repeat everything so we can practice putting these sentences together. All through time on the planet Earth, plants and animals go through their life cycles, which proves they are living things. First, they start as live births, eggs, or seeds. Next, they nourish themselves so they can grow. After a while, their body structures change. This sounds really good. So we went back and I'm giving the information. We're orally rehearsing this. 
I'm not trying to memorize exactly how I say this. As a matter of fact, it's good for you to change the sentences so that you show the kids, look at that, I'm saying it so it sounds better. Once you went back and you orally rehearsed this, ask your students to turn to their buddies and rehearse what the information that we've recorded so far. As I walk around, if they sound academic, if they can say these sentences really well, then we will go to the last part of the life cycle. Boys and girls, they become adults. They're full grown. Do I want to have a transition on my line? Let's see. We had first, next, after a while. Notice by having these lines here, it makes them see the transitions and how to select one for this last part. We could say finally, later, in the end. Which one do we want to use? You choose the one that you like the best. And I could write all three of those up on the board and they could choose one. Maybe I'll use finally. Let's practice that sentence, but we shouldn't practice it in isolation. Why? Because we need to know what the sentence is before it sound like so that this makes sense when we actually plan it. Let's go back. All through time on the planet Earth, plants and animals go through a life cycle that proves they're living things. First, they start as live births, eggs, or seeds. Next, they nourish their bodies so they can grow. After a while, their body structures change. Finally, they become adults or full grown. I keep repeating this organizer over and over. When I'm presenting this to students, I even repeat it more than we are in this lesson. I'm constantly listening to what the kids sound like. And when I have other children who come up with different ways to configure the sentences, we stop, we make a big deal about it. Like, ooh, listen to that sentence. Let's go back and repeat our organizer and use the way you just said it. So that I'm reinforcing that these are ideas and our language is forming these sentences and the sentences aren't memorized from what I, the teacher, say. They need to understand these ideas and they need to practice saying them so that they sound like writing and they aren't memorizing. They're using the meaning and they're using their language to put together the sentences. That is critical. If they try to memorize, they're not going to remember the information, they're not going to understand it, and they're going to constantly be thinking that writing is me practicing what the teacher just said. Instead, you're saying to them, I'm taking these ideas and I'm going to look at the pictures and the keywords and I'm going to try to put them into sentences. We have our introduction, we have our body. Let's finally end this with a conclusion. What do we need our conclusion? Repeat that big idea, but use different words. On the bottom, we have our conclusion and we have our secret formula, S, light bulb. And our conclusion should remind the reader, now that I've told you all this information, just remind you what we were talking about, about the life cycle. But I don't want children to say, hmm, plants and animals go through a life cycle, which proves they're a living thing. I already said it that way for my topic sentence. So my conclusion needs to have that same big idea, but I need to say it a little differently. How do I do that? I use S light bulb as my secret formula. The first S is subject. Who or what is this information about? I go back up here and I say, hmm, this was about plants and animals. Let's go back down here to the bottom. What's another way to say plants and animals? These living things? All right, let's write living things here. These living things? What about these living things? Repeat the big idea. There's two parts to my big idea. Go through a life cycle. Hmm, that's another way I could say that. A life cycle is all about change. So these living things change. So I have the first part. Instead of saying life cycle, I'm going to use change. And over here, I have, why is this so important? Up on my topic sentence, which proves they're a living thing. Hmm, I have living thing here and I want to say it differently, which proves they're alive. I have repeated this big idea by identifying the subject using different words and the big idea using different words. Sometimes it may be difficult to come up with different words. So you can just use the same ones, but you try to at least change one part of that topic sentence when you're repeating it for the conclusion. We have all our information. 
Let's say the entire lecture note, just like college kids would. Ready? All through time, on the planet Earth, plants and animals go through a life cycle that proves they're living things. First, they start as live births, eggs, or seeds. Next, they nourish their bodies so they can grow. After a while, they change their structure. Finally, they become adults or full grown. These living things change because they are alive. These living things are always changing because they are alive. Things that are alive are always changing. Wow, I like that. When something is alive, it's always changing. So we have many different ways that we said this. I went back, I rehearsed it, I asked the students, turn to your buddy or turn to the people at your table and repeat the notes. I walk around, I listen. If they sound pretty good, then I will either give them line paper and they will start writing it out. And I absolutely insist that when they write it out, they keep repeating their notes and writing, repeating their notes and writing. We do not want a room that is quiet and they're just writing it out. We want them to know that writing is all about keeping that language going in your head. And it's very difficult for kids to do that. They tend to take their lecture notes, put them to the side and try to just remember what they were saying. Instead of keep going back, repeat your lecture note over and over and over. One final activity that you can use in this process of lecture notes is punctuation time. Have your students grab a red pencil, a red crayon, or a red pen and add punctuation. You're only doing this if your students have difficulty with capitals, commas, periods, and every time they write something out, you have to take them, pull them to the side, and try to show them where to put their capitals and periods. This is a fabulous way for you to, to teach those mechanics on their lecture notes, and then as they write, making sure that they have that information there. At the beginning of the year, you may want to make punctuation time a whole group activity where you're introducing this concept to all your students. But as the year goes along, students who have shown you that they will put capitals, commas, periods in their writing, they don't need to include the punctuation on their organizer. Instead, we'll eventually release them so they can go and write. But for those students who still need this, even as the year progresses, I'll pull them in a small group and we'll put the punctuation on our organizers before they go and write. Nothing worse than students who are writing and they are not aware of capitals and commas and periods. It's very difficult to teach them that after they've written something out. This creates that awareness and it also teaches them to go back and to fix their mechanics on their own because when they write out their paper, if they are not including that, they can go back to their organizer, capture the different parts of their organizer, reread their paper and say, ooh, I forgot my capital here, my period there. This is a way for them to not only learn punctuation, but also for them to fix their own papers and to apply these concepts to their own writing eventually independently. Let's do our punctuation. Punctuation time! Let's look up at our organizer. Start at the top with the topic sentence. Ready? All through time. Let's put the word all there. Three lines under the A to remind ourselves that we are going to begin with a capital. All through time on our planet, comma. After our setting phrases at the beginning of a sentence, we need a comma. All through time on the planet Earth, plants and animals go through life cycles that prove they're living things, period. First, ooh, here's our next sentence. Let's capitalize the F, comma. They start as live births, comma, eggs, or seeds, period. Oh, look at that. I'm able to put my commas in a list. Next, let's capitalize that, comma. They nourish their bodies so they can grow, period. After a while, let's put our capital there with a comma. Their body structures change. So we're going to put a period at the end here. Finally, capital, comma, they become full grown adults. And I'll put a period there. These, let's write out the word these. 
capitalize, these living things change because they are alive, period. After we add our punctuation, I will point out to the students, boys and girls, look at our organizer. We have one, two, three, four, five, six periods, meaning six sentences. When you finish writing, you should have those six periods. You should be able to go back and count that many periods. And if you don't have the six, then you know something may be wrong and you have to read your organizer one sentence at a time and match it to your writing to make sure that you've correctly put the capitals and the periods in the right place. One final thought, when your students are writing, even though this is at a very simple paragraph level, we always want them to indent. So put a yellow line right across the top of the page there on your organizer to remind them, indent. To show you what I mean about the indentation with the yellow, I drew a tiny little page here with line to mimic the student writing page. And the students would draw a yellow line on that top part of their paper. So when they go to write all year long, they will be forced to indent. Eventually, you don't need to have them draw the yellow on their line paper. They can just put it up on their organizer to remind them, oh, that's right, I need to indent. But at first, it doesn't matter how many times you tell them to indent, indent. Many students who have always started at the margin will just do that because they've practiced it so many times to start at the margin, it's difficult to break that habit. So that's why we put the yellow line there. Again, they orally rehearse their organizers. Once you walk around and you know they have the information and an understanding of it and they can orally rehearse it and it sounds like writing, then they start to write. What if you have a few kids who are having difficulty? Pull them up to the front and make this only an oral language activity where you and those students will go back and you will orally rehearse the information, you will provide them with a little bit more clarification, and finally, they can tell you what to write. You could be the person who's writing in front of them. Take out a piece of chart paper, and together that small group of students may tell you what to write as they read the organizer, and you're just writing it out. You're their scribe. That's one way to help with your second language learners or your slower progressing children who need more clarification and more rehearsals and practice. Please use the lecture notes as an activity to front load your students with those big ideas about science, social studies, anything in your core subjects so that they have enough background when they go into that unit, they actually can grasp and get to deeper levels of thinking instead of you reading information that they have no schema, no understanding, no prior knowledge to. Once you have the lecture notes and they can orally rehearse this, then they take it to writing. So again, we're going to integrate writing throughout all of our core subjects. And in this case, when they don't even know about the life cycle, they still take it to writing, which means what we saw in our research, when they were writing this out, not only are they saying it, repeating the information over and over again, but this is gonna make them better writers and it's going to make that information stick. They're not going to forget about this because of all the rehearsals, because they're writing it out. Lecture notes is one of the two activities that we use in your core subjects to integrate writing when your students have little or no background about the subject matter. I've just shown you lecture notes. Next, we will go into content diagrams as a second activity that you can choose in order to front load your students with information and give them background knowledge. Most specifically, to also pull in vocabulary.